All right, Mike. This is for for all the money. The, the best score I've ever shot. Okay. <laughs> you know, this is the shoot one better than I've ever shot. And you see this player here. Calm down. All right. Let's see. Oh, now I got even longer coming back. <laughs> so this video, guys, is all about helping players who have the yips on short putts. And then we're going to get into yips in another area too. Uh, this is Mike from AlaskaGolf.com and Super Season Round. There you go. And uh, take that from you, Mike. All right, so uh, Mike, this is a, a a lot of times a career-ending thing. As far as recreational golfers, they might get the yips and never come back to the game. Yeah. What what are what's the best way out of this uh, hell that is the yips? Well, first of all, you made a good comment there that set you up for the yips. Oh yeah. Because your comment was man, I need to make this putt. This is the best round of my golf life. I, I need to make this putt. Right there, you've basically set yourself up for disaster because you've put way too much importance on the putt. It's just another putt. It, it really, it's no big, any bigger deal than any other putt you've ever had. So how your mind perceives the outcome is, is a big deal. So if you're standing over a ball and you're going, oh man, I want to make this. Boy, I got to make this. This is to break. This is to break 80 for the first time. See, first of all, when you're saying I, I got to make this, you know, I don't want to miss this putt. See, your brain doesn't understand. Don't. So if you say don't miss it, don't leave it short, don't hit it too far. What your brain is already seeing is the bad, and your program it doesn't know don't. So if I say don't pull it, I've already programmed pull. Okay, so what you'd be better off to do is get up over the putt. Now this is gonna sound crazy, and this is a Phil Blackmore, and he's, he's worked with the mind more than anybody I've ever been around. He's helped me on some things, and this has probably helped more people, these two things I'm gonna show you, with the yips. Uh -huh. So you get up over the ball, and right before you hit it, you go, don't make it. Whatever you do, don't make it, and hit the putt. Because remember, your brain does not understand don't. Yeah. So be really, say, don't make it. Mm -hmm. So what is your brain seeing? Just make it. It's just the ball going in. Yeah, okay, it's, a, it's an seeing. image. Yeah. You don't, don't make it. The image is the ball's going in the hole. So your neurological system lines whatever it has to line up to make the ball go in the hole. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you start making putts. You go, how can that be any different? It's huge, huge difference. So what I get a lot of people do is actually saying they get over a putt, say don't make it. You know. Yeah. So, Rather than like. Don't yip it. Don't pull it. Yeah, or, yeah don't, uh, don't suck so it inside. If don't you go, right. man, I hope I don't yip this. You've already programmed yip. <sighs> so you've got to trick your mind with a different picture. See, the yeah. don't chip, chili dip it, don't yip it, don't hit it fat, don't pull it. I, I, no, no, no. You've just programmed what you don't want to have happen. So you've got to come up with a different way to verbalize to your brain the same thing. So rather than saying, don't leave it short, what did I just do? I just felt what it is to leave it short. You go, whatever you do, don't hit it firm enough, and you're going to hit it firm enough. Right. That's the first thing. The other thing, when you get over a putt, what you just did was typical of what everybody does. Oh, man, this is to make par. This is my best round ever. So now you get up over here, and all you're thinking about is all the mechanics and, oh, I want to make this putt. Well, here's what you do. You set up, and when you take the putter back, as you take the putter back, on the way down, you say something. So you go, Mike, you yeah. just say a word. Uh -huh. Because your brain, if you're going to say something, your brain is not going to go in two places. Right. So when you take it back and say, Mike, or you can say, there's a lot of things you could say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of colorful words you could come up with. But under your breath, you don't have to say it loud enough, but here, you just go, Mike. Or you go, your wife's name, or, or Banana, pick, anything. Or pick yeah. any some yeah. a mountain scene. Just go mountain scene. But you go back and you say something, and what happens is when your conscious mind or your subconscious, your conscious mind is involved in saying a word, it gets out of the way of your subconscious and lets it do what it's supposed to do. So those two things for yips have helped more people than anything I've ever done. Now, yeah, technique is the ball. The other thing is big is if if you don't see line correctly. So if somebody's standing over the ball, right, and I'm looking at that line, and I get up over the ball, and I want to put it straight, and I'm standing here, and that line doesn't look right, 
and somebody's saying trust it, I mean, you're, you're going to get right here and go to try to correct for something that doesn't yeah. look right. So that line looks good to me. So I know if I hit the ball and roll the line, it's going in the hole. So I don't have any subconscious fight in my conscious because I didn't get the yips, but I had the, what I call the apprehensions. Yeah, right. Which is borderline yips. Yeah, you leave that alone, it'll turn into the it, yips. It's, it will. Yeah. And so, but I figured out before it was disaster, what was causing the apprehension. It was because I didn't see line right. So if you see line good, that also tends to take the yips away because then the task is clear and you can commit to it. The second thing is trick your brain with a different way to say it. You want to make a putt, don't say, man, I, I really, you know, don't miss this, don't pull it, don't push it, don't leave it short. No, get up and say, don't go in the hole yeah. or don't, whatever. But th the end thing is in the hole or the right speed. Yeah. And the other thing is you make a stroke and you take the putter back and then just say something. I mean, I don't have to say it out loud. I mean, I yep. used to do it a lot. I still do it sometimes in tournaments. If I feel real jittery, I get the line right, I set up, and then when I take the putter back, I'll, I, I, right now I'll say my granddaughter's name. I'll go, Ellie. And see, it lets me just go. A happy thought. Mike, uh, one thing that, that you talk a lot about self-talk and the importance of it, one thing, if we're talking about maybe like this kind of putt, which yeah. uh, if you follow around the handicap tournaments, this becomes a real issue. And I think one of the thoughts that comes into a lot of people's head is you would have to be an idiot to miss this putt. I mean, this is, this is a simple putt yeah. and everybody's expecting an easy one. And uh, sometimes these can really lip out or something. Oh, no, no. Well, let's see again what you just said there. Right. So how do you replace such I mean, obviously, you'd have to be an idiot to miss this putt. It's not going to be good. Well, but here's... What, the, what is good self-talk One of the best... Well, first of all, one of the best things anybody ever did for me, I had a friend of mine who was a good teacher, just a good player, a friend of mine. He caddied for me in a tournament. And I got up over a putt to win a tournament, and he's caddying for me, and, he, and it was about this long. And he says, put it in the lake. I went, what? He says, put it in the lake. I go, well, <laughs> put it in the lake? Yeah, so I walked up. I said, okay. I put it in the lake. <laughs> and then I dropped another ball and put it in. I said, well, what the hell was that all about? He goes, well, okay, you put it in the lake. Did anything happen? Did you, get, did you die? Right. Did, did, your, did, I, did your parents not like you anymore? Did you change your life? I said, no. He says, well, then what are you worried about? So part of the problem with these putts is that you're, what you're saying is, if the outcome is good, I'm good. If the outcome's bad, I'm bad. Yeah, there's like a real shame factor there. There too. is no shame. I mean, whether you, make this, you, or, like, whether you yeah. miss this or make that, that has nothing to do with your who you are as a person or as a player. So what you have to, what you commit to is you say, there's my line, there's the hole. I'm gonna walk up, I'm gonna aim the putter, set up, make a stroke. Where the ball goes, it goes. Wherever it goes, I'm okay with it. Yeah. If you can get to where worst case scenario, you're okay with it, all of a sudden that, a lot of that anxiety goes away. Because I can, I can promise you a two foot putt going in or not going in does not define who you are. Because about two minutes after you've missed or made that putt, it is of no relevance to anybody. Right, right. So what the hell's the point of making it relevant now? Because yeah. in two minutes, it isn't going to be relevant. And the reality is, while you're hitting that putt, whether it goes in or not is only going to be relevant to one person. Yeah. You. Mm -hmm. The people who are with you don't care. Yeah. I mean, really, they don't. Yeah. Most people don't care, and the ones who do hope you miss it. And they've all been there before. Well, yeah. So, so... 90% of playing golf and hitting these shots is how you perceive outcome. So it's post shot, how you react to what the ball does or doesn't do. If worst case scenario, you miss or you miss hit it and you're okay with that, there's so much less pressure on you to make it. If you're into outcome, if it goes in the hole, it justifies me being here, it justifies my practice time, that's too much pressure. Yeah. No, you've practiced, you're ready, give it your best shot, wherever it goes, it goes. It isn't going to matter. Two minutes from now, nobody is even going to remember if you made it or missed it. And good to remind yourself of those things but as, as you're waiting to hit yours, like you've marked it, now you've got like a minute until you hit it. Just remind yourself like this really isn't in the grand scheme of things that well, I, I don't even, honestly, right. in that minute or somebody else's turn to putt, yeah. I'm not even, I don't, 
the, the more I don't pay attention to anything. I'm not thinking about my stroke or right. make the putt. Right. I'm just, I'm going to get up. I already know what I got to do. I don't have to sit there and reinforce it yeah, or, pondering or, or about ponder it. about, ooh, yeah. what if I make this? What if I miss it? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's why golf becomes mentally a little bit harder because you've got a lot of time between shots to ponder the potential oh, of yeah. outcome. So what happens? The guys who are at the best at learning how to control their how they're going to deal with outcome become the best players. The best players outcome is just outcome. It's not a reflection on who they are as a person or as a player and it doesn't define them relative to the time they've spent practicing. It's just an outcome. Thanks to Mike for uh, letting me come out and visit, pick your brain. No problem. You guys see a lot of really cool tips on MolaskaGolf.com. There's a special promo code through Be Better Golf that you can uh, use to get a discount off of when you first join. Thanks a lot for watching. Mike also has a YouTube channel with a lot of cool t content on it. Just type in Molaska Golf in the search and you'll see. Thanks again, Mike. See you later. Bye. The way to the club to just hover above the grass. You don't want to rest it on the ground. I see so many people that set up and they're, they're so bent, their arms are so bent. If there's any momentum, see, if your arms straighten it out at all, you stick it in the ground. Right. So I'm, I let the weight of the club just kind of 